Howdy folks, today I want to talk about Pinagain as it relates to headphones and we'll get a little bit of a deep dive into this. So I have three headphones in front of me which sort of represent three extremes, although, uh, not extremes, but three versions of how in-ears can work. I don't have the most extreme version which would be the etymotics which go, uh, those are the longest bores you can find on anything, but right here we have the Soft Ears RSV which I consider to be really rather thick and long. And when you put this in your ear, it fills most of your ear canal and goes fairly deep, at least it does for me. Uh, next one up, we have the Dark Magician. And this I would consider to be sort of like, um, maybe like an average type of uh, bore length, not too short, not too long. And if you put a tip on this, it will lock into this like middle point, right? You know, and so um, this actually has a fairly shallow fit. However, you could get it a little deeper. And then we have the, uh, the sort of other extreme. This is an EJ07M. And this thing's bore is ridiculously short, right? So with the RSV, this is going to be filling most of your ear canal and going fairly deep. With the Dark Magician 2, it's going to be filling uh, sort of a medium point of your ear canal and going, say, medium deep. And then this one is going to be right at the very uh, tip of the ear canal. Um, because that's all you can actually get out of this thing. Uh, it, you know, if you use longer tips, that might help a little bit, and it does. And here's why. So, let's go over to the, uh, well, this. This is an ear resonance chart made by Etymotic, uh, probably in the 90s. And I'm not going to say what I think is necessarily perfectly correct on this or not, but I would say a couple things. So, number five is the... Uh, sort of the bump that we see in most headphones, and that is the ear canal and eardrum gain. And according to Etymotic, this is about 10 dB at about, um, well, I think it's about two and a half, uh, so 2,500 uh, hertz. And then we have another one, which uh, another peak, which is the number three peak here, that's the concha, that's the um, outer ear cup, so to speak, and that is right around 5K. And so I guess what they're doing here is they're adding up both of these and then they come up with this crazy 17 dB at 2700 hertz ear resonance factor. Um, so like again, I don't really think that's correct. That's way too high. But what's really interesting about this as I was thinking about it is this is an open ear canal, this number five right here. So there's nothing plugging it, right? So that means that, uh, sorry, this right here, the uh, number five. So that means that if a headphone is barely um, sealing in the tip of the ear canal and not filling it up, uh, then the ear canal itself is going to give you somewhere around 10 dB of gain itself, by itself. And then we have to absolutely exclude the concha because that is removed, right, uh, from the in-ear. Well, it's removed from the gain because it's bypassed with the in-ear. But what isn't bypassed is this number five, right? That's the ear canal and eardrum gain. Okay, so you can argue about how this amount of gain needs to be for sure. But the important thing to note here is that when we're talking about different bore lengths of headphones, that absolutely influences the 2.5K bump. All right, so I have been tuning, um, well, playing with some tunings. And if I bump over here, this is the tuning I've been playing with. This is a very, very flat tuning. If we go here, that's, uh, let's see, what are we at? About 69 to 71. It's like 2.5 dB of pinna, well, quote unquote, gain right in this area. And then a little dippity dip and a little bit of extra bass. But so, you know, I tuned this up, popped these things in my ears. This is an actual headphone and was shocked to realize that they sound good and they don't sound like a V-shaped headphone. But the important thing about this is this particular headphone shell is a very, very short bore. And that means it's sealing at the outer end of the ear canal, meaning that although I may tune in only two dB of gain to the headphone itself, the ear canal is adding in another almost 10-ish of gain. I think maybe it's not quite 10, but that probably depends on the person and just millimeters of how far you get this thing in your ear canal. So this is very important. So when people look at graphs, you need to look at the actual headphone itself, the way it looks, the bore length, and that's gonna tell you 
especially, you know, you, you might have to try a couple of uh, different styles of headphones to see how they fit in your ears, but that's going to tell you a lot about how the graph is actually going to hit your brain and the amount of ear gain, ear canal gain, you're going to get out of it. These are three sort of uh, examples of what they could be. Edemotic's going to be removing almost all ear gain, and that's why Edemotic's with a 10 dB pin gain uh, sound correct, whereas if you add 10 dB, say, on the O7M, which is actually what it has out of the box, it is way, way too much. Since this thing is only fitting in the very tip of my ear canal, it's adding, well, probably near 10 extra dB of pin gain, and that we arrive at like 20. That's insane, and that's way too much, in my opinion. But uh, this is important stuff, man. I won't call it a breakthrough, but I will call it um, important information that everyone needs to think about when they look at graphs versus headphones they are interested in. Right on. Talk to you later.